says crowd and bridge set up. What's next? Anesthetic. Anesthetic. Okay, we, let me hit on this for a minute. Uh, anesthetic is not required for crown C because we're not doing anything with the tooth besides putting something on. Mm -hmm. So if we were prepping the tooth, we would get anesthetic, needle, whatever. If your patient is sensitive, like Miss Crystal said, or the one that walked in, if she said that her, her patient is sensitive, we might want to get that patient numb during this time because she's going to be the one to be like, ow, that hurts, or whatever. The only thing a live tooth will fill is the cold from the, from the cement and the water because it's straight dentin. Remember, if we adjust two millimeters on every side, we're in the dentin. So that's all it is, it's just dentin. So the dentin will send a signal to the pulp faster. And um, the only sensitivity they should have is the coldness or the uh, cement. So that's if they fill them. So you'll always ask your patient, how did your temporary do? And then they'll tell you, oh, well, I couldn't eat ice cream or I couldn't eat almonds. That there will tell you it was sensitive when they chewed. Something was up with the tooth. And you could ask them, well, this procedure does not require for you to be numb. Would you like to try it? And they'll say either yes or no. Um, the patients will go, the patients will always elect, be like, oh yeah, let's do it without. Because again, don't forget, in their head, it's just a shot, right? So they don't want the shot. So it just depends on your patient. And some patients will just like hold it through because sensitivity to cold it doesn't feel good when you get sensitivity to ice cream or anything like that, right? So, and that's gonna be at least for a minute or so. Uh, what else are we need? What else does it say? Hand cutting instruments, that's there. Fisher and high spur. Okay, so I don't have my high speed out. And the reason why we would need a Fisher burr is because um, if we try on the crown and we check the bite, we may need a diamond and a polisher at that point, either a rubber point, either greeny or brownie, um, or white stone. And that's what their technical names. They're green or brown. So that's how greeny, greeny or brownie, those are polishing uh, burrs. And we would, if their bite is high, we would adjust the crown. And this is a permanent crown. This is not a temporary crown. So we're pulling the temporary off during this appointment. What's next? Diamond burr. Diamond burr, yeah. So the, again, that's an adjustment for the occlusal round burr as well. Cord packing instrument. Cool. Right, this is prep. Who's got C? What do you got? Cementation, here we go. Uh, yeah. Cementation, that's the letter word. <laughs> I'm all like, wait a minute. We can we're asking too much stuff. A cord packer is only for prep, okay? Because we need to pack the cord around the sulcus for the final impression. So that's how I knew which procedure we were off on. Okay, here we go. Permanent cement. We got our mirror explorer, our cotton pliers, a spoon excavator to remove the temporary cement, um, mixing spatula, okay? I had a set up setup if, it's, if we need it, so it's ready to go if we need it. If in your office, always set this up and leave it set up and ready to go because what's, what stinks about a doctor waiting is we could topical and you could set up or it's already ready. Does that make sense? So you always wanna set up everything that's ready. So always set up your syringe. If you don't use it, fine. You don't use it. Uh, let's see. We also have a Mizzy Wag, uh, Wizzy Wheel or Egg Shaped Diamond Burr. That's to adjust, but we're not going to adjust. Polishing points, so a grainy or brownie. We got dental floss. I don't see any floss. I just want maybe less than a foot. No more than that because 18 inches is... That is for full mouth flossing. I'm only flossing one tooth. Make sure both my hands can fit. There you go. That's good. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, lab box. So our lab box. Will you grab that box on top of there? This is technically <coughs> what a lab box looks like. You'll have your lab slip here. Here's our lab slip that's baked, uh, filled out. 
So you'll have your lab slip with all the requirements or whatever. You want to keep that handy. And then you'll have your final impression. Whoop, whoop. You'll have your final impression. And then you'll have your uh, prelim. And then this is what your case looks like. And the crown would be on the tooth that's actually not in here. Um, so the crown, the actual crown will be on that tooth. So this is what the case looks like. You want this. You need this. <coughs> I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, let's see. Then we need a Woodson instrument, articulating paper. Okay, we need to get a mandrel and a lead apron for an x-ray. So let me get an x-ray out. So it's a, well, what are you running? Get a red rim for me, please? <coughs> Jordan? Kelsey? Somebody? What? A red, a red rim. rim. Red rim. <laughs> I'm getting cotton rolls and gauze out also. I'm going to go find it, the crowns. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll need that. We're getting a bite wink because, okay, I explained the other day, see if you guys remember. What does a bite wink look at? Close. What does a bite wink diagnose? The bite. Ooh, you it. the bite, no. No. Mm -hmm. So the bite wing, what does a PA diagnose? The periapical lesions, okay? And a bite wing diagnosis is interproximal. So in order for us to see the interproximal, remember, we're, mm -hmm. we're going to cut that mesial and that distal off two millimeters, and then we got the margin to look at. So we need a bite wing to view that margin because it's interproximal. <laughs> All right, I got some crowns here. I don't think it's an anterior tooth, but we'll, you guys will get the gist, right? You guys good role playing? Okay, so here's your procedure. What's the first one say? Someone guide us so we don't have to keep looking down. Over the head. Okay, we're gonna we're just gonna show you on tooth number eight and nine. Yep. Okay, basic pass. I'm gonna come down here. This passing down. Okay, so hey patient, do you want to get numb today? He's gonna say no, so we can skip that. So the majority of your patients are gonna say no. So remove temporary crown with a small spoon. Another type of temporary So let's pretend this is an actual eight and or eight, eight okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in there. Oh, there's only one sided spoon. We'll put it right here at the margin, and then I'm gonna press down. And the temporary cement should release it easy. Yeah. Here's another way. So she's gonna grab it with her hand or protect it. Your doctor may re also require you to do what we call a throat pack. So we're gonna open our gauze and we're gonna set it inside the mouth. And when we peel it off, sometimes if we catch it or don't catch it, that gauze will catch it. So we call that a throat pack. It won't go through the so it won't go through the throat. Because remember, I told you my scary story one time. I'm doing a crowd seat and it fell off while well, most people that I know spit it out. This lady decided to be out. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, she's <laughs> joking. And we had nothing but an emergency situation after that. She swallowed it, but in her head, she's choking and it's right there. We had to send her to the emergency room. We had to get an x-ray and make sure that she didn't aspirate it in her lungs. Were you in trouble? I'm pretty sure she was mad, but I, I mean, Whatever. Okay. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> Alright, before I leave though, before I leave, when, once I tighten off my temporary crown, 
I want to clean the excess cement on my nub or my tooth on my margin because one speck will make my permanent crown not seat. So I want to make sure that this is pretty good and clean with all my cement. So I'm going to clean it off with my spoon excavator or my explorer. <laughs> Remember to grab it correctly. Mm -hmm. So, when so you're you're top it. The okay, so now he looks clean. The next one is past permanent. Yeah. Before I do that, please put a side note. We're gonna rinse and dry because I just made particles with the other cement, and you want to make sure that's out of the way. Okay. So when you're like making sure everything is out and stuff. Should we be in there with the suction or no? No, because what if you suction that crown? That's a permanent crown, and if it goes in here, okay. then that's ugh. What if you do the saliva? You could do the saliva ejector. Okay, next one. Ah. And there's this one. Mm -hmm. I actually, you want me to actually go ahead? Oh, I don't know if that works, but. It's not working? Mm -hmm. Is the water on? Yeah. Yep. And we have water. Okay. She, she rinsed. <laughs> and we want to make sure all the particles are gone. That's the whole reason why they're rinsing. Um, if your patient is sensitive, here's another trick to do that. Spray some gauze. And you're just going to wipe it instead. Mm -hmm. Because your patient could be super sensitive to the water. Okay, they might not want that. All right, next step. Past permanent crown. Okay. <laughs> she had it the whole time. Yeah, and then you want to, so here's the critique on this. So this is a mandible tooth, right? This longer portion is the buccal. The shorter portion is the lingual. So wherever we're working, you should know the facial and the lingual for eight and nine, because that's obvious. And then you want to pass that, and you want to usually pass it so easy for me to grab. Okay, so you're going to pass like that, instead of like this. Because if I pinch it like this, I could take your glove. Okay. Does that make sense? You have to be careful not to drop. So I was always taught to pass on the back of my hand. I can pick it up, and it's in the direction of where it's going to be. And we're pretending that's an eight tooth, okay? <laughs> What are you doing? Okay, next. Pass the floss. Why am I passing the floss? To, to the check the contents. Right, we need to make sure that this tooth is tight. So, my assistant's going to help me. And you're going to hold that there. I'm going to floss the distal. Okay, lift up your finger for a sec. Ah, the tooth fell off. <laughs> I'll put it back. Okay, hold it. Um, so, put your finger back now. Okay, and I'm going to check the mesial. Both contacts matter because we want it tight. Next. Oh my God. It says hold, parentheses, stabilize with the end of the mouth ear, be, being sure not to be in the doctor's field of vision or movement. Okay, so I had her do my finger. She can hold it like this too. Okay. You're, so there's just two different ways to hold it. Okay, so then pass the explorer for doctor to check the margins. All right, so. <coughs> I'm going to check my margin. Remember, if I put my hat on, I want my margin, which is my shoulder, and my crown or my hat to be even. So when I click the tooth, it should be smooth. All right? So like here, obviously the margin isn't met because it's not there. So I'm checking all the margins all the way around and lingual. It's on there. Okay, check my margins. So then it says, pass articulating paper to check the skin. All right, this time, now, it's not cemented, so it still could come off. I'm gonna have my patient bite down slowly. Don't bite on yourself. Okay, he's gonna tap, tap, tap. That's my first view, because that's our normal. 
Mm -hmm. And then we also got to do the lateral excursions, okay? So they got to grind. And we're checking for any marks. What we're checking for, you're going to get blue marks on all teeth. What you want to see is that from K9 to K9, if we're working from the anterior, that there's even marks or even <coughs> type of blue. So the blue marks have to be dark blue all the way K9 to K9. If you get light blue from six to nine and then dark blue on eight and then light blue again, seven and, and six, that's when you wanna adjust eight. Does that make sense? So you wanna make sure the blue marks are even. If we're doing a posterior one, you want the marks to come all the way up to the canine. Because if they don't come all the way up to the canine, that means he's stuck biting on that posterior tooth. So you want to make sure that it, you get even marks. You're going to get the blue marks, but you want to make sure that it's even color for one and that it's not darker on the other one. That's when we adjust. Okay, next. Um, Cross spoon excavator to remove the permanent cut. Okay, I'm going to take it off. Again, we could put throw pack or the way I just did it, like that. And then you're going to rinse and dry. We're going to rinse and dry the tooth and we're going to rinse and dry the crown. So we can do it this way if our patient's not numb. Or again, this way. And then you're going to get your tooth. Where's my tooth? Then you're going to get your tooth, and we're going to just dash it with them. Make sure that's clean and dry as well. And you're going to place cotton rolls. Oh, you want it back or no? Nope. So you're going to hold on to that. Then we're going to place a cotton roll. So go ahead and pass me that. Again, for the max layer, I like to wiggle it out. And remember that I'm the cotton roll is isolating the area and retracting the lip at the same time. So the lip is up, ready to go. So you're going to mix the permanent cement and line that inside of the crown. All right, key tech. Can someone get <coughs> Brent? Garrett. <coughs> Can you get that cabinet right there at the corner? And there's a cup full of spoons. May I get a green spoon? It should say key tech on it. Thanks, Brett. Brett. <laughs> yeah, Brett. He got a new nickname too. <laughs> Remember that your bottles match each other. So it should be green, green, and then your scoop should be green. If we're using Vitra Bond or anything else, it'd be orange, orange, and your scoop is orange, okay? All right, so I'm going to mix for you. Please. Yeah, so you can see it once. Again, fluff your powder. Just like baking soda or baking powder has a little leveler for you, so you don't have to guess on it. So stick that in. You want your powder fluffed. Then you level it off in there. Please scoop your powder, okay? You're gonna turn your bottle, this is the most important part. You're gonna turn your bottle straight vertical up and down. Whoop, I didn't, I did it before I wanted it to. Ver vertical up and down. Your squeezer part, cause we can't squeeze glass, is the this part right here. Okay, that's to allow your drops. When you put your drops, you need to put your drops away from your powder. Do not put your drops on top of the powder. If you put your drops on the powder, what happens is it starts to chemically set. And then before you mix. So then you've already had the timer already gone. We got a 30 second mix time with Ketek. How you mix is you take your powder to liquid, not your liquid to powder. If we take liquid to powder, it's just like me with a diaper and I'm going to have a full soggy diaper and I'm running across the floor leaving my streaks. <laughs> okay? Then we're going to take the powder because it's easier to scoop, it's more dense, and we can move it better. Okay? That's the only reason why. All right. So two drops. Okay. 
always recap your stuff. And then I'm gonna take my powder to my liquid and then I'm gonna smash. Again, we wanna focus on staying dead center and moving as fast as we can. 30 second mix. All right, now we got some creamy stuff. Make sure all the powders, if you're messy like me, which I am, I can't ever stay in the center. Make sure you gather all your material. All right, so now I'm ready to go. Please wipe off this, because this is permanent <coughs> cement. Make sure it's uh, wiped off, otherwise you're gonna be scrubbing forever. Next step. Um, pass crown to doctor in the palm of your hand and assist in removing the cotton balls. Huh? Okay, first thing I'm gonna have you do though, is I'm gonna have you butter. Butter my crown. Some people do this. You're gonna see this happen often. But I'm an Etta, and next mod, you're gonna be doing this as an Etta, and you'll find out why I want you to do this way. Some people will gather all the cement, and they'll put it on the crown like this. Now we got a bulk or pull, okay? <coughs> I don't do that, because I hate to clean. I have to clean the mouth once it once I put it in it's gonna push all over right so I don't do that instead I use since this is already out if I put topical on there I'm gonna break it off and I'm gonna put that in my cement and then I'm gonna just clean this all right that's still a lot of liquid for me in my crown I'm a picky picky etta mm -hmm. Nope, I need mean, just what I have. And I'm going to take some of it out because I only want butter. Those of you who like extra butter on your toast, I'm sorry. We're going to do light butter. Okay? Then you're going to pass it to me. Again, I like it not in the palm. I like it on top of your hand. Okay? So pass it like that. Then I'm going to grab it. You should have a cotton roll also ready for me. And I'm going to put this on. I'm not gonna put it on the tooth because I really don't wanna take it off. And I'm gonna press first with my hand. That means I've set the crown all the way to that margin with force. Then I'm gonna have my patient, after a minute, bite on my cotton roll to make it hard. So this has a three minute set time. So he's gonna be including on my cotton roll for three minutes. Okay, three minutes passed. Or rose with steak for a patient to bite down. We oh, just did the that one. Oh, you already passed that. Skip. So then <laughs> remove cotton roll or rose with steak. We already did that. Oh, right. the one on your hand. Okay, then you pass the mirror and explore to remove excess heat. All right, so she's going to pass me. Remember, I dentists will always keep their mirror. So I'm always in use to keeping that. And then I'm going to remove the excess cement above the margin, meaning here, because that's where it went. So I'm gonna, yeah, so I'm gonna be, that's where I'm gonna be, all, of, all the way up in that gum. And I'm gonna remove that, like that, all around my crown. I left my cotton roll in here because sometimes I could just wipe my instrument there instead of having my assistant to wipe it. So again, I'm Anetta, and I do things for a reason. So this is gonna be not only to retract the lip, I'm gonna clean and wipe so I don't have to get out. Okay, so all my excess cement is removed. So then you're gonna floss the contacts. Floss, there should be a knot in your floss at this point. This time I'm gonna put my floss in approximately, but I'm gonna pull to either lingual or either facial. I'm gonna pull it through because the floss is gonna dislodge anything that's in there. Then I'll go to my other side again and pull it out. If I pop it down, since this is still fresh, I will knock it down. And then if I put it in, what if the top of this cement is hard? And then I won't sit all the way up the way it was. Does that make sense? So you wanna, so you wanna make sure anytime you put uh, cement in your crown, you're pulling through. Never wanna floss up. They can floss up themselves. Floss up, down, whatever you wanna call it. 
So then you're gonna rinse and dry. All right, we're gonna rinse and dry that. Please make sure you rinse the cotton roll so I can get that away from the tissue. All right, freshening his breath up, taking that out. And then you're gonna take a PA x-ray of the tooth with crown seed. I had her bring a bioween because I only had a molar crown. And we're gonna take a picture of whatever tooth we're at. If it's an anterior tooth, depending on your office, you could do a vertical uh, x-ray. At this case, you could do a PA, but for sure in posterior, you'll always do a bite wing. So we're gonna bite down. All right, our x-ray is gonna come out of the processor, and we're gonna making sure that the crown sealed that margin, or right up next to that. If it didn't seal, your doctor will have you take, when we try it in, and do the floss check, the bite check, and the margin check, you'll take an x-ray before it's cemented. So some doctors take the x-ray prior to cement being in place. So it's not always at the end. The end will we'll send this x-ray to insurance saying it was permanently cemented. That's why the end x-ray exists. But there's always an x-ray in between because we never want to cement this if it doesn't touch that margin. And the only way to view that is going to be through the x-ray. So you'll always take another x-ray, okay? So we'll verify, okay, it looks good. Now we'll dismiss our patient and do post-op, correct? What do we have to avoid? What's the post-op <coughs> It says, we have permanently sealed your crown bridge today. Please care for it as a natural tube. Brushing using small, gentle circular motions, concentrating on the gum line inside and out, and floss like you would your natural teeth. The tooth could be sensitive to hot or cold for a few days. This is not unusual. And then you ask the patients if they have any questions. If they do not, then you escort them. Okay, I've had a patient permanently cement. I had a restaurant right across the way, Subway. They went to go eat. He came back after he ate with his crown in his hand. Please mention nothing sticky, nothing hard. Because, and then tomorrow, at this time, you can resume your full diet. Always mention sticky and hard, especially if something that's wet. For 24 for hours? For 24 hours. Okay. Uh, that's the major thing on that. And then he, when he flosses tonight, pull it through the face. Because, again, he could dislodge that down. And then, again, the crown is not going to fit 24 properly. Hours? 24 hours only. So tomorrow at 1 o'clock, you can eat whatever you want, and you can floss however you want or however you're used to. Okay. Any other questions? I don't think I changed a bunch besides... Maybe add a side note, what number is the my last check for articulating after trying? What number is that? So I try in my crown and I do my, my contacts for the floss. I do my margin check and then I check the bike. Oh, that is 10. 10, yeah. So number 11, the 10A, put a note there. That's an x-ray. That should be an x-ray. Mm -hmm. Ten. ten after right after ten after the after after the bite before you pass the spoon excavator yeah because I'm gonna pop it off with the spoon yeah okay so yeah we're gonna check it we're gonna do an X-ray then if you miss the X-ray at that point please take the X-ray at the end that's the check off at least one but if you do the X-ray after the checks then you're up to date you know how old this paper is this paper is pretty old but every doctor will verify that it's at the margins and that's where you check okay okay